spaghetti Make it out of squash Gonna put the video on YouTube I hope all of you watch Tell your friends about it Y'all remember the lentil recipe that we did a few episodes back, right? No? Put up here, you should know. Cause today, we're gonna cook up some spaghetti squash. Now this is still healthy, mind you, but we're gonna add a ton of cheese to it. For all you cheese lovers, we're gonna do spaghetti squash lasagna. You're welcome. So we're gonna cook up the squash, we're gonna make our own homemade sauce. Now you can do a jar sauce, and I'll show you this later on, but we're gonna do a, a custom sauce on this one, mainly because your boy can't eat onions. I don't know if y'all knew that, fact number 11, 12 on that, can't eat onions. Got a bad allergy to it, so we're gonna make our own. Let's go ahead and preheat the oven. We're gonna go ahead and do it at 410 degrees. All right, let's get the ingredients together. Spin. Wash your hands. Very important. <laughs> Wash your hands. We're gonna grab your bulb of garlic and take out about five cloves out of here, chop them up, and toss them in our bowl. Take our knife and Now we're gonna take our can of skinned whole tomatoes, and what we're gonna do is go ahead and toss them in this bowl, mash them up a little bit, make our own sauce. You can already get a can of already crushed tomatoes too. It's no harm, it's not cheating, it's cooking. Just remember, watch your salt on it. All the canned stuff, you remember the last, you remember the last video, I didn't even gotta say it. And if you really want to just caveman it, you can just use your hands and mash them up too. That's fine. So we're gonna throw in one more can of it. We're gonna drain this one though. It's a, a bit too liquidy. All right, now let's get our garlic in the pan here. We're gonna take a little bit of olive oil. We get over about a medium heat, and then we can go ahead and throw in our garlic. If you are an onion lover, I mean, it's cool. We're still good, we're still good. But this will be the time you want to add that in. Go ahead and get it simmering with the garlic just before the tomatoes go in, and you'll get the, you know, the flavor you're looking for out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and let this simmer now for about 45 minutes, which coincidentally is about as long as we're gonna cook the squash. So it's a good time to have this going. And it's also, if you wanna get real fancy with it, you can always throw in a little bag of oregano, add a little bit to it. Uh, any kind of seasoning, spices, stuff that you normally would put in there. Let it get to a simmer first, add it into it, cover it. It'll be good to go. Let's get to that squash. Still like a year ago, I didn't even know spaghetti squash existed. I mean, it's a good alternative too. A lot of people, as you get older, aren't uh, they're trying to avoid carbohydrates, aren't they? Trying to cut back on your carbs. But 
of course, I love pasta, so carbs are kind of like a thing you just gotta deal with. However, came across this spaghetti squash, you can make a kind of noodle, and granted, I will say, there is a, a taste difference in them. There's a little bit of a texture difference. So my girlfriend actually introduced me to this because she um, is gluten-free and can't eat the same pasta. So we started making this. And if you really, really, you know, you're having a hard time with it, you try it, it's not quite your thing, try mixing it with pasta. You do a little 50-50 mix, it's not so bad. So we can go ahead and carve this one up. This helps to have a very sharp knife. And if you don't have a very sharp knife, then you just, you just muscle it. You just break it in half. All right, now if you notice on the inside, if you've ever carved a pumpkin, this actually looks a lot like the guts of the pumpkin here. You got these seeds in it. This is actually the part you don't want to eat. And this, which looks like, you know, it's a bit firm now because it's part of the rind, is actually going to soften up and become your noodles. We're going to take this spoon and dig out all this nasty stuff on the inside. All right, and there you have it. You can actually take these out and roast them if you want to. Kind of roast them up like pumpkin seeds. But uh, we're not going to. We're going to feed them with the chickens. All right, so we're just gonna throw a little bit of water into this and throw a little bit of olive oil across here. And what the water's gonna do is help steam it. You know, I mean, there are so many ways you can bake this thing. I usually bake them face down. Some people do them face up so you get a little more brown and crunch around the edges. Um, the water, I think, helps like steam it and cook everything evenly. I like to coat it with an oil, with uh, olive oil in particular, because I feel like it kind of just gives it a little more, seals in the flavor a little bit on it. But you could just do it with the water, steam it, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you're into. Only a little bit of water, though. You don't need a lot in it. A little bit of water goes a long way. You get too much and it just kind of turns to mush. All right, so once you got them coated with your olive oil, sprinkle a little bit of salt on them, and then throw them in your pan. It's that Himalayan sea salt. All right, let's go ahead and toss this in the oven. Because apparently it's too large for that. So make sure when you got your squash that it fits in your oven. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of turkey meat. We're gonna cook this up. If uh, if you are vegetarian, vegan, you don't want turkey in it. Mushrooms are a great substitute for it. Kind of still gives you that that meaty chewiness and everything without being meat. So. But for this, I'm gonna go ahead and coat our pan again. Throw a little more olive oil in it. Get this warmed up. So if you notice here too, you got your lean turkey meat. This thing goes all the way up to, I think like 97 or 98% lean on it. You can always season up your turkey as well. If you want to add a little bit more, a little extra flavor to it. But honestly, I find a good salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic to it is really all you need for this. Because once everything kind of gets situated, you get a really good flavor as it is. So you don't need to add a ton extra to it. So John, this one's for you, because I know you said on the last one that I kind of lost you at health food. And granted, this one is a bit healthier too in terms of most meals, but we're going to douse it in cheese just for you, buddy. So all you cheese lovers out there, we got cheese upon cheese upon cheese. You're going to love it. So we're going to go ahead and mix into your, you're going to dump in your ricotta. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some Parmesan in. And then we're going to add a little more Parmesan. And then when you're done, we're gonna add a little more Parmesan. All right, take some eggs. We're gonna go ahead and mix all of this together. And then we're gonna add some more Parmesan. <laughs> now,
Now you also could add a little bit of salt and pepper into this. I'm not gonna throw any salt in here right now, only because, you know, if you're watching other food videos, anything I made on it, I gotta, you gotta watch your blood pressure. You got we are not 20 years old anymore. So we gotta, I'm not gonna add any salt to this right now. But you salt person, feel free. Add whatever you like to it. A little salt, a little pepper. Wash is done and it looks a little crispy. Oh no, it's perfect. Perfect. It's already starting to shape up and become noodles. Give it about 10 15 minutes and it's gonna make it a lot easier to work with, not burn your hands. So, go ahead. We got our sauce ready, got all of our turkey stuff in it together. All right, well, let's move on to our, let's get some spinach going. How about that? Now, y'all know, y'all know it says pre washed spinach, but. We don't trust that around here. No, no, we wash it ourselves. Wash your vegetables, wash your hands. And one more round. Now spinach is of course an option in this. This uh, doesn't necessarily have to go into it, but honestly, most of us don't get enough greens, vegetables, vitamins. We gotta add something to it. I, uh, I remember when I was a kid, my mom really got me into spinach. She always made the, the frozen kind, but she, uh, she used to let me watch a bunch of cartoons, like the old Popeye cartoons. And because of that, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, I need more spinach. It's not gonna get buff on its own. Gotta get your greens in. Y'all like wrestling. Y'all know I do that. <laughs> gotta get your greens, gotta eat right. You gotta eat right if you're gonna wrestle. You wanna keep an eye on your spinach here. Really, you just wanna cook it enough until it starts to kind of wilt down a little bit. When it goes into your lasagna, it's gonna keep cooking and it's gonna get, it's gonna basically turn into mush. So, to try to keep some of the texture with it, keep all the flavor in there, you just wanna cook it, cook it down until it wilts a little bit. All right, so everything's looking good. We're gonna go ahead, drain off this little excess water here and set it all aside. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the squash out and reuse this pan. It's a little bit, a little crispy, that's all right, just a little extra flavor. But this, this is the, the magic right here. Check this part out. And there you go. Instant veggie noodles. Comes complete with its own bowl. Look at that, delicious. So Levi, I'm gonna send this little challenge out to you. You make this, except make it into ramen. We're going to... All right, so let's lay down a little layer of sauce in here. Then we're just gonna put a few of the layers on there. Now we're just gonna take our noodles. Just kind of spread those all around there. Get this as even as you can. Just gonna scrape that a little. Now we take our spinach, layer this in. A little extra cheese, just a little bit. Just gonna give it a light sprinkle across here. I mean, what's a lasagna without a whole lot of cheese, right? So speaking of cheese, we're gonna go ahead and take our ricotta and egg and everything mixed here and make our next layer. And again, you just want to get this as even as you can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but, but we do strive for perfection. And we'll go ahead and grab our second half of the squash here. The sequel, the squashing. This time, it's personal. And make our next layer. Just kind of eating the mic about in a world where one squash is never enough. <laughs> one meal will take you to the edge. The edge of flavor. Rooster Teeth, I know you're out there making games. So, uh, holla at your boy, hit me up. I'm just voice over work, I'm available. You know, just let me know. All right, now our final layer of sauce right across the top here. And now we top it off with, oh yeah, more cheese. So much more cheese. Really, you can put any kind of shredded cheese you want in this, although I would not recommend anything like a cheddar. You wanna stick with like your mozzarella's, Parmesan. 
Throw in a little bit of your Parmesan. And if you get those giant clumps in there, don't even worry about that. Just mash them up a little bit, it'll be all right. See what I really love about this? That's when you get it just right, you can see the layers in it. It's just, it's perfect, it's perfect. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take this, toss it in that oven for about another 20, 25 minutes or so. You want all this to kind of bubble a little bit, get a little crisp on the top. It's food time. So now we wait 20 more minutes. I know, I know you're hungry. It's getting there though, it's getting there. Now you gotta find a way to occupy yourself for about 20 minutes. I'm sure you can figure out something. feed five, six people here, or feed yourself for several days. You know me, I'm a fan of meal prep. Anything that makes it so you don't have to do as much work later in the week, you do it all once, you cut up your sections, put them in your Tupperware, and you're good to go. And this will easily, easily feed you for the week. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute, cool off a little bit, throw it on a plate, and you're good to go. All right, so there you go. Spaghetti squash lasagna. Got all your layers, got your cheesiness, and now let's, let's give it a shot, see how it came out. Perfect. The noodles are just right consistency. All the flavors kind of melding together. Spinach isn't too, uh, too soft. Everything came out great. Right. So there's a ton of variations too that you can do with this. I mean, you can do it with the turkey, without turkey. I mentioned earlier, you can put mushrooms in it instead of any kind of meat. You can do cheese substitutions for it. You can do no cheese at all. So you can just cook up the squash, add some butter to it, add some salt and garlic if you want. But really, there are so many things you can do with this. And it's low carb, almost no sugar, high protein, high vitamin, high vitamin A of all things, which I didn't even know until I looked into this. If you guys got any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish eating this, but I'll catch you guys next time. Y'all are hungry, cause there's plenty of food. You'll forget that it's healthy, cause it tastes so good.